In this video, we will convert our existing project which we had built in our earlier video building REST based web services with Spring Boot to connect to an Oracle database and retrieve the person information from there. Previously, we were returning a hard coded list from our person service which obviously would not be the case in most production applications. We will see how to install the Oracle JDBC driver to our local Maven repository. Then we will modify and create the entity, service, repository and controller classes to connect to an Oracle database and retrieve data from it. In this video, we will see how to connect to an Oracle database but the process and steps would be more or less similar for other databases too. And in a future video, we will see how easy it is to swap the databases. So first, let us take a look at our existing project which we had built in our earlier video building REST based web services with Spring Boot. Here is our application which currently has a model person, a very simple object with four fields, ID, first name, last name and age. Then under the service package, we have the person service where in the constructor, we are creating two person objects and putting them in the person hash table. Then the get person returns the person with the ID requested and get all returns all the persons. The service class is invoked by the controller. The request mapping of slash all calls the get all method of the person service and slash id calls the get person method with the id. To see this in action, let us go to the browser and type http localhost 8080 persons slash all to get all the persons and slash persons slash one to get the single person. Now instead of hard coding and filling the persons in the person service class, we would actually like to go to the database and retrieve the objects. Let's do that. We will connect to the Oracle database and use Spring Data JPA. We will use the CRUD repository of Spring Data which will automatically generate the CRUD methods on the person entity and using a standard easy convention, we can write methods to execute complex queries too. So first, let's go to our maven file and add the dependency for Spring Data JPA. Let us next add the Oracle JDBC driver to connect to the Oracle database. So let us paste this entry over here. Hikari CP is a very fast and lightweight Java connection pool. It is highly optimized and very performant. Let us use this for Spring Boot. Let us now modify the JPA dependency to exclude tomcat-jdbc as we want to ensure Hikari is used. Let us save it. Now you would notice that there is a wiggly sign for the Oracle JDBC dependency. That is because due to license restrictions, the JDBC driver is not present in the public Maven repository. So we will have to install it in our local Maven repository. Let me Google first for Oracle OJDBC 8 download. This brings us to this download page. You need to accept the license and enter your account details. The download will start automatically. I have already downloaded it and it is in my downloads folder. I also have Maven installed. Let me go to the terminal. I am in the downloads folder where the jar file is present. Now let us run the following Maven command to install the jar file in my local Maven repository giving it a group ID of com.oracle, artifact ID of oracle and version of 12.2.0.1. All right, it is installed successfully. Back in the maven file, let us also change the Java version to 1.8 and let us save the file. And now we see that the wiggly sign is gone as it is now able to resolve the oracle JDBC driver dependency from the local maven file. Great, now with the dependencies in place, let us go and modify the code to get the database retrieval going. First, let me go to the application.properties file and add the following settings for Oracle. The Spring Data Source URL, username, password and driver class names are for the Oracle connection settings. Next is the Hikari setting to set the connection timeout and maximum pool size. Finally, we do some logging 
To see the SQL, Hibernate is generating. Spring Boot will read these settings and wire up the connections to the database, set up the connection pooling using Hikari and enable logging. We do not have to hand code any of these. Alright, let us now go and modify the person object and give it the entity notation. Typically, the ID for a table is its primary key, which is a long, and is auto-generated using a sequence. So let me put the generated value notation. To indicate that the strategy would be sequence, the generator would be person underscore seq. And in the next line, using the sequence generator, we can define the sequence with the same name, person underscore seq, also indicating its database sequence name, person underscore sequence, which will be used to generate the primary key. So let me change it to a long. Let us first fix the imports. Let us change the ID to a long in the getter and the setter. Next, let us go to SQL Developer where I can see my Oracle database to which I am connecting through this application. Here is the person's table with its columns corresponding to the properties of the person class, ID, first underscore name, last underscore name, and age. Spring Data JPA relies heavily on naming conventions and it converts the camel case to snake case. So for example, in our person class, we have the first name variable. Spring Data JPA will look for a column with the snake case that is as first underscore name. Similarly, for the camel case last name, it will look for last underscore name in the table column. The table currently has two rows. And here is the person underscore sequence, which we refer to in the sequence generator annotation, which will generate the ID for the person table. Let us now create a repository object to perform CRUD and other operations on the person object. First, let's create a package repository. Now inside this, let us create an interface, person repository interface, which extends CRUD repository from Spring Data. Let us type it to the domain class it will handle. In this case, the person class, indicating its ID as of type long. Let us fix the imports. And this is all is needed by Spring to auto-generate the CRUD or create, retrieve, update and delete methods. We can write our own methods in addition. Let me paste some code, fix the imports. For instance, following a standard naming convention, we can create find methods. So starting by find by, and then putting the field we want to search by, here, age, field from the person object with init case. This takes in the int age we want to search by. Similarly, using the same naming convention, we can create another method, find by first name, again making the first letter of the property name in capital case, and passing the string first name we want to search with. All right, now let us modify our person service to search from this repository object instead. First, let us delete the hard-coded creation of the person objects in the constructor as we will be pulling this from the database. Let us inject the data source and the person repository interface object over here. Now, let us modify the getPerson method which returns the person object with the given ID back. Let us modify the ID to be of type long. So let us simply return person repository dot find one method which is automatically provided to us by the CRUD interface. Let us modify the get all method to return a list of person objects instead of the hash table. Let us fix the imports. Inside return person repository dot find all method which is again provided automatically by the CRUD repository interface. This method returns an iterable person list. So let us cast it to an array list of person objects. Let us import the array list and cast it to be of type person. Now let us just go back to our controller and modify it so that it accounts for the new return types. So we change the return type of the get all method to be a list and let us change the path variable to be long instead of string. The last thing we need to do is to modify our main Java class demo application so that it recognizes the person entity 
and the person repository interface. So let us add entity scan model. Let us fix the import. The entity scan annotation is used to indicate the package to scan for entities. Let us add the enable GPA repositories annotation to indicate the base packages for the repository objects. Let's fix the import. All right, we are good now. Let us stop and start the application. Let us now access the slash person slash all URL and we get all the data. So we have converted our existing project to look at the database for the information. So let us summarize what we talked about. So in this video, we started off by looking at our existing project, which is a Spring Boot MVC project, which we had developed in an earlier video, building REST-based web services with Spring Boot. Next, we modified our Maven repository to include the dependency for the Spring Boot Starter Data JPA, as well as added the Oracle JDBC driver dependency. We also demonstrated how to download and install the Oracle JDBC driver to our local Maven repository. Next, we modified our application.properties file to enable Spring Boot MVC to wire up the database connection. We indicated Hikari CP as our connection pool mechanism. And then we also enabled logging. After that, we modified our person object, created a repository, extending the CRUD repository, which automatically generates a lot of useful methods, including the CRUD methods for us. We modified our service class to reflect these new methods. And then we modified our controller so as to invoke these methods. Finally, we modified our demo application class to indicate the packages to scan for the entity as well as the packages to scan for the JPA. And with these modifications, we were able to successfully convert our existing application to look to an Oracle database for information versus returning the hard-coded data. So as I mentioned earlier, even though we connected to an Oracle database in this video, these steps and the process for connecting to other databases are quite similar. And we will see how to swap the database in one of the future videos. So stay tuned and keep watching.